It's Israel and the United States, which are creating a crisis out of nothing. And what would you like to see happen right now in terms of the talks coming up on Thursday? This is the first direct talks between the U.S. and Iran in more than 30 years. What would you like to see happen, and, and what ultimately can come out of this? Well, I'd like to see diplomacy succeed. The bottom line is the more the United States and Iran talk with one another, the less likely uh, it is that the two will engage in hostile actions against one another. But you can't have diplomacy if it's a one-way street. If the talks open up with the United States uh, providing a whole list of demands that Iran must accede to or else the talks will fail, then the talks are doomed to fail. The United States, you know, here we have a president who says he wants to get rid of nuclear weapons in the world today. And he recognizes that a key aspect of this is a viable, valid, nuclear non-proliferation treaty. But for a treaty to be viable and valid, it must be applicable to all powers. That means that when Iran signs the treaty, Iran must not only abide by the treaty, but also to be able to operate fully within the context of the treaty. And Article 4 of this treaty clearly allows Iran to have the right to enrich uranium for, the use, for use in nuclear power. The United States, in citing the law, must be willing to abide by the law, not only in terms of its own actions, but also to allow Iran full obligations and rights under the law. If this isn't what's going to happen, then these talks are doomed to fail. I want these talks to succeed, and I'm hopeful that the Obama administration right now is carrying out pre-game posturing, but once it comes time to sit down at the table, will actually let the tools of diplomacy work, which means it has to be a two-way street. And Iran fired these two uh, long-range missiles on Monday. Why do you think that it did that just days before these talks? It's a sensitive situation. <laughs> well, um, I think the answer is obvious. Iran is making it clear that it has its own deterrence capability. That at a time when the United States and Israel and France and Great Britain and others are calling the Colm facility evidence of a covert nuclear weapons facility, raising the specter of a nuclear weapons armed Iran, creating an emergency type environment where people are talking about the need uh, and requirement for a preemptive strike, Iran's saying, you do so at your own peril. The bottom line is, if Iran is struck, Israeli cities will be struck in return with Iranian missiles, not equipped with nuclear weapons, but with conventional weapons. Iran simply saying we are a sovereign state with our own inherent capabilities for self-defense. And if you attack us, you do so at your own risk. Is this the ideal situation? No. But then again, it's not Iran that started this game of saying we're going to bomb you. Iran is simply saying if you choose to attack us, we can and will defend ourselves. Again, this is an argument, a discussion we shouldn't be having. If the Obama administration was responsible here, they de-emphasize this hype, this politically motivated hype, and deal with the reality that there is no nuclear weapons program in Iran, that the newly declared Qom facility is not a threat to international peace and security, and that when Iran and the United States sits down uh, this coming Thursday, that we will, you know, the United States hopes to find a way out of this this morass that we hope to find a way to peacefully coexist with Iran, an Iran that has a nuclear energy program fully monitored by the International Atomic Energy Agency. Unfortunately, that's not the premise going forward, and then you get both sides behaving in a precipitous and irresponsible manner. The Iranian missile launch is precipitous, it's irresponsible, but it's in keeping with the trend that's, that all parties are participating in. Scott Ritter, I want to thank you very much for being with us. Scott Ritter was a UN weapons inspector in Iraq from 1991 to 1998. He's the author of several books, Iraq Confidential, Target Iran. His forthcoming book is called Dangerous Ground, America's Failed Arms Control Policy from FDR to Obama. When we come back, health care reform. Stay with us. We are mad as hell because Congress sold us out. We are mad as hell, and for us there is no doubt that the best health care plan is a single payer plan. Now's the time to finally put it on the table. Look all them and Republicans want to kill health care reform, my friends. They're shocking all campaign fractures your tax will never end. They want your benefits to benefit their Wall Street friends. So we pay through the nose for the CEOs and corporate dividends. Profit before people and greed before goodwill. Is their battle cry as they move in for the kill? We the people are collateral damage. 
someone's loved one died today Cause conditions pre-existed or they couldn't afford to pay We are mad as hell because Congress so sad We are mad as hell and for us there is no doubt That the best healthcare plan is a single payer plan Now's the time to finally put it on the table Big health insurance went to Congress to ensure its own survival and ensure health care reform arrived there, dead on arrival.